All right, this one's gonna be on FCF Speed. It is um, some scripts I created to launch other scripts. Um, if you watch my video on uh, FCF Nova, pretty much the same thing, it's just that this one deals with uh, mainly just terminal stuff, uh, anything in Tmux, right? Anyways, how to use this here. So we bust out our, you know, our menu here. And from here, you can actually execute other scripts in here. So I have a few that I'll talk about here. Uh, first one being like a uh, app launcher, not the best solution, but you know, I'll give you some examples here. So if I want to go uh, open HTOP, you know, I can hit tab. We can do multiples in here. If you do, let's say pipes, what was that one? Pipes. All right. Uh, all three of them. And then you can see it opens all three of them on a new window, all right? There you go. Uh, what's next? Next, uh, Blue Pill. It's kind of like my snippet program, but um, what was that? It'll copy to your clipboard. So um, here I got a bunch of you know files that I already have code inside it, and if I want to copy to my clipboard, copy it. This would probably be good for like a nano users. Um, you know, you can actually just paste it in here, get another snippet, uh, let's say clipboard, something like that. In Vim, I think they have a better option to do snippets than um, that. But if you want to use it this way, uh, you can do that for, you know, pasting common codes that you normally don't want to type out again if you already know what it is. <coughs> Anyways, that's uh, what the blue pill is for. And to set up the... Uh, thing for that is what is that one blue all you got to do is really is you know create that folder and inside it you just create a bunch of text files uh, and inside the text files you know you paste whatever code you want you don't have to use code but that's what I use it for uh, for the blue pill thing anyways uh, next thing what are we gonna do don't need this anymore quit out of this no uh, okay, so next one is bookmarks. And this one is using Surfrol bookmarks. So if I want to open like my, um, what was that? We saw some text up here. All right, we can do tab. And we open all three of these. And here you go. These are my bookmarks. All right. Anyways, um, same thing with the other one. What was that? Um, instead of bookmarks, we can do uh, Surfrol. And this will allow us to uh, search the internet. So let's say if I want to search um, DuckDuckGo, we'll hit tab. We'll do Bing also. So you can do multiples here um, if you want, right? Hit enter. And what are we going to search for? We'll search for Tmux, uh, I don't know, 3.2. How about that? And there you go. He searches uh, Yahoo here. And then this one's Bing. This one's DuckDuckGo. Right. So that one's for Surfrol. Um, if you want to use either bookmarks or, you know, just searching the LVs. <coughs> Next thing, calculator. This one is going to try to use Python by default. But if it doesn't find Python, it will try to get uh, the BC command. And basically, you can do any calculations that Python support. Um, you know, like addition, subtraction, stuff like that. You get the idea. And hit Control D for Python here to exit. Uh, pretty much it for that. What else is that? Uh, CMUS here. Let me uh, mute the sound first here. But for CMUS, we can actually use Q. So you can Q like uh, you know your songs. I got almost for 2020 here, top right. Cue up the songs here and switch to my music. Uh, so we can show you this here. So these are the songs we just queued in. If you want to switch to something else, like uh, 1999 or something like that, right? We can switch up to uh, different songs we can queue. Anyways, uh, that's how you queue songs with CMOS. And what else we got in here? Okay, emojis. Uh, let me go back to emojis. All right. 
emojis here. This time I gotta set it up because last time we did this I didn't set it up, but <clears throat> you know this one depends on your terminal. If it's it has like the fonts for it or the Unicode for it, and then it'll show up, um, you know, in these uh, emojis. And look at that, we copy to our clipboard and we do um, prefix and P or however you want to paste it. Right, and this is how you paste. Um, that's it for emojis, not that hard. Next one is locate using ranger here. Um, I, I didn't want to use the locate command by itself because by default, I believe uh, the only thing you can use is xdg open and that thing opens, you know, um, GUI applications. And I want this one to be like pure command line uh, terminal stuff. So um, <clears throat> you can do the same thing, but this one will open with, uh, you know, Ranger. So let's say, for example, we we'll use that same uh, Xena wallpaper we always use. Look at that. It'll find where it is and it'll go to that directory uh, and it'll highlight that, you know, um, file that we searched it for. All right. And in here, you know, since we're already in here, we can actually do, uh, you know, if it's a text file, then we'll edit it. Or if this is an image, we will view it and stuff like that, um, that a file manager, you know, is better equipped at handling those. So even if I, uh, what are we going to do? Let's locate something else here. Let's see my zone go. Right. So let's say, for example, if I was, you know, trying to search for a script or a file or something like that. Since this one's a text file, you know, at least I can view it or edit it, whatever it is. Um, much better with a file manager than using the locate command by itself. Uh, next thing, what are we going to do? <clears throat> okay, so uh, red pill here. This one is to view my cheat sheet. So, for example, if I want to view, um, I don't know, arc. Uh, we got anything else in here? M. Um, Keymon or something like that, right? I open all my notes for it. <coughs> I'll open all my notes, and I uh, can see that um, it open it in a different window for each one of them, right? You get the idea. Um, how do you set that one up? Uh, pretty much the same thing as the blue pill. Let me see here. Let me go to. You get that one? Okay. Pretty much the same thing. You um. You have, you know, all your um, text files and you just put whatever notes you, you want in it. Not that hard here, right? That's how you set it up. What's the next one? Snippets. This one is like a single file and inside it, um, it can be code if you like. I mainly use this for, um, you know, quotes, memes, URLs, stuff like that, that I want to copy and paste. So for example, we open this, we'll search for some Trek, uh, what was it, uh, some Trek quotes. And the way that this is formatted is that it's just a text file and then every uh, line is a single line. And it has like a little delimiter using uh, semicolon, semicolon, double semicolon. And everything after that is your, uh, what was it, your, your uh, tags, all right? So you can search however you want. So we can do like the rules of acquisition here. Um, what's my favorite one? Number one, actually, just one, right? I don't remember the other one, who is. but here goes. This is um, the rules of acquisition, All right? You can copy that. Um, what else is there? So, uh, there's the other one snippets, but this one's for multi. This one is kind of same thing as the blue pill one I just showed you, but it's uh, mainly just like personal stuff like uh, my address that I send to people if I'm going to meet them up to uh, sell some stuff or whatever it is. Anyway, so I don't want to show it off, but it's the same thing as the blue pill one. It's just that it's non-code related. Right? Um, anything else? Okay, so, you know, we have a bunch of stuff on our, um, what was that, clipboard history. So you can actually access your clipboard history. Uh, you know, not a, not an issue here. So we can do like clipboard, uh, clipboard. So this one's the default uh, choose buffer that they have in Tmux, which is way better than mine. It has like a previews of it and everything, right? So you can actually uh, use your uh, clipboard history 
uh, with TMUX here, right? And look at that, you can actually paste whatever it is in your clipboard. So there's multiple ways to use this here. So that one was the built-in one. There's um, uh, this one using FCF if you want to like filter it out or something like that. Because the other one doesn't really filter it out. I mean, you can still search, but it doesn't filter it out like this one. And so, you know, I can do it from here, right? Um, what else is there in that one? So you can do like delete, clear the whole history and all that if you want to do that. But that's how that works if you want to use uh, the clipboard manager that they have in Tmux. Uh, what else is there? Um, we'll talk about the other stuff later on, but... Okay, we do have a uh, translate shell, which is, you know, I, I wanted to put it away in here just because maybe once in a while I'll translate some stuff that I don't know into English here. Say, read hola, amiga. All right, how about, uh, what was the other one? What's my uh, high school uh, Spanish book? All right, there you go. That's my high school Spanish book. Anyways, uh, control C to get out of that for a translate. What else have we got in here? Uh, we have Tuxi, which I talked about last couple of videos. Um, but this one can, you know, search uh, Google or ask Google questions. Like, let's say, for example, like, uh, you know, stupid questions that normally probably n no one really knows except for Google. So, uh, when was created? All right. Stuff like that, you know, ask anything else you want, like, uh, what did we do last time? Uh, when was... Right, stuff like that. Then, uh, you know, you can ask Google uh, your questions. Control C to get out of that. Uh, what else we got? Okay, so you have mute and, you know, this thing is... Uh, YTFCF, which is to search YouTube. Let's say 2021 trailers. And this one I set it up um, to open with uh, MPV. What else? Do we, what have we got here? Endangered species. What is this? All right. This one I have it set up to MPV and uh, Task Puller. So it will actually um, should grab the URL in the back end somewhere. And then there we go. Look at that. All right. Anyways, we'll quit out of that. But that's how I watch uh, videos. If I need to pull up YouTube really quick uh, to watch a trailer or something like that. Uh, what is the next thing? So um, these ones are URLs, scans, URL view, and URL. Was that W3M? I'll explain what that is here. But we'll quit out of this first here. Um, real easy. This is how you set up the menu, you know, this menu here on Tmux. So if you have version, what is that, Tmux 3.2 or higher, you can actually use this display pop-up. And uh, it looks pretty, you know, when you're using this. Um, as far as those URL um, scripts, you need these one in front of it. And then it will actually access, um, you know, URLs. I'll show you in a minute here. But this is how you bind the key. Um, I bind it to tab, so I hit prefix and tab to open it. But if you're using an older version of Tmux, um, you can always use either new window or split window. So let me show you an example how that looks like here. All right, so you do a split, and you can still do your common stuff that you, you know, do in here, right? Sometimes that the split is actually better, but it doesn't look pretty. That's the reason why I don't <laughs> I don't have it by default here. Uh, you can actually do split using a um, what was that the uh, zoomed in mode? So dash uh, Z here, and basically this one is still a split. It's just that it'll you know be zoomed in, aka like kind of full screen. So this is how it looks like, All right? But it actually is still a split screen here. All right. Anyways, um, however you want to do it. Um, but if you want to make it look pretty, you want to use the display pop-up, you know, if your Tmux version is 3.2 or higher. Anyways, that's how you set it up. And as far as the, um, what do you say? Was it bookmarks here? Oh, I don't think I explained this in the beginning, um, for the bookmarks, uh, for Surf Raw. 
but the way I have it is, um, what is that? So let's say, for example, you had to give an alias like this one, CNN, and I, you know, have a space and then I have the URL, right? And then another space. Anything afterwards is just uh, your tags. Um, and the tags is separated by a, uh, what is it, a pipe sign? Uh, that's just the format or, you know, how I do it right now. And that's how it shows up like clean on here where it has like, um, you know, the, the alias in the front and then the tags in the middle and then the URLs is at the end. Uh, so that's how I set that up uh, if you're using Surfo for your bookmarks. Now, as far as the URLs uh, thing here, this one is to convert any on screen. So it, is, it doesn't have to be this one. It can be, you know, your text editor. It can be your web browser, whatever it is that you have on your terminal screen uh, with Tmux. You can actually turn all these URLs into clickable link. So let me give you an example. So this one's URL view. A lot of people know about this one. Personally, I don't like this one, um, but you know, you can still work it here. Let's say number nine here, jump to nine, hit enter, and it will open uh, with my default web browser, which is a uh, terminal one here, all right? So that's how that works if you wanna convert um, URLs to clickable link. Now, the reason why I don't like that one is because uh, it doesn't show you any of the content because it just shows you the URLs only, right? But you can use some other ones like uh, URL scan. And this one gives you some context of it. Look at this. Oh, actually the whole context. But you see how it says um, the surrounding text around it and then it's pulling from the URLs that it detected. And the bottom here, this is your list of URLs, right? So this one's a little bit better. Um, I just don't like the way that they lay it out here. I just wish they just have the numbers and the URLs. Where was it at, you know? Um, but that's not how they do it in here. Anyways, uh, there is a, uh, what's that? URL scan compact if you want a URL view, but using this program, they do have that one also. Uh, but my personal favorite is always uh, using W3M to do the same thing. All right, it'll turn into a clickable link. Now, with this one, it doesn't actually have the hinting mode, like, you know, to jump with the numbers and all that. Um, they don't have that support for plain text converted ones. Um, they just don't do that. I mean, I open an issue, but I don't think they're ever going to fix that or, or anything. So I can't really jump, you know, with the numbers uh, using hinting mode or anything like that. I would actually have to go to that URL and then, uh, you know, open it. And then um, I can use it. However, it's not so bad uh, doing this way because I can see the full context and the URLs. Where is that? You know, so I don't have to be confused of, oh, do I have to look at the bottom, the top, whatever it is? I just know exactly where is that, right? Anyways, that's just my uh, preferred way. You can use whatever you want. Uh, so that's how you use those uh, URL, um, you know, converting to clickable link. Uh, what else do we have in here? I need to talk about. Okay, so uh, besides all those scripts that we talked about in here, um, we can actually do like tmux commands too. So most of these are self-explanatory, but some people, you know, they they don't want to remember the hotkeys. So you can actually just script everything uh, to do everything for you. So let's say, for example, I want to do um, new window, right? New tmux window. Look at that. Let's say I rename this window. Rename window, all right? Uh, Junko. There we go. Now his name is Junko. Let's say I want to split the window. Split the uh, pane here. Let's say I want to split it again um, using vertical window, all right? So simple as that. If I want to kill this window, look at this. So you can control it using just, um, you know, fuzzy matching and then it'll run the script and then I'll do the Tmux commands. Anyways, most of those are self-explanatory. Uh, you can read like a little description of it. But um, some of the stuff that I started using is a little bit um, different here. Let me see here. So, for example, if I wanted to find all the pings on this thing, we can actually use FCF to that too. So, find pings. 
and this will find all your pains across different sessions that you have so you see I have like you know different session names and windows and panes and stuff like that all right so i don't it doesn't matter i can go let's say i want to search for my napster nap boom i jump to it find pain i want to search uh was that my rss right look at that quick uh what else is there what's that let's say find instead of finding pings we can actually just find windows only all right if i want to jump to uh radio look at that jumps to my radio um window simple as that now i didn't really want to use uh, this fine thing every time because um it, it you know it, it has everything in there and sometimes i only wanted to jump to the windows that i uh normally use um and so i create like kind of like shortcuts for this and i call these ones uh what was that one these go to's go to commands so team must go to all right so i have these go to and i i can actually label it i can actually give it like a little description and all that so you can see in the description here you can see that oh this one the bt one it goes to my BitTorrent. this one goes to audiobook you know um, my dcc client download manager email stuff like that right so for example um you know, I want to jump to my IRC, jump to IRC. I want to jump to uh, podcast. I want to jump to uh, what was that? The other one. Sometimes I forget, but let's say for example, my web browser. Boom! All right. Go to email. Look at that. Real quick. All right. Instant messaging. Boom! All right. Um, you get the idea. What else we got in here? Um, download manager you know if you remember the the freaking uh windows then uh you can go there really quick anyways that's been a game changer for switching uh different windows across sessions doesn't matter what session you have um it'll you know uh match it and go to that window now as far as how you set that one up uh real simple let's go to this one here so for example um so this is a script if you want to just like um uh, create a new one let's say for example i'll create a new one here we'll create another one uh this one will rename this one here so the important parts in here is that you want to rename uh this portion right here so let's say for example our our current window here is demo right if i want to name this demo um it'll always go to this window named demo and in here, we're gonna give it uh, a new uh, description or something, whatever that's right. Let's say, for example, uh, demo window uh, empty space, whatever it is. Um, I use periods as a space holder, so that's what we're gonna have to do here. But the important parts here is just this one here, right? The the name of it. It'll match whatever window it is, All right? Anyways, so for example. We'll save a new one here so that's our new script demo and even if i'm a different place let's say for example um go something else here okay audiobook all right if you're in a different place i can always call that thing back using was that uh, the name of it demo and it'll jump me back to where i were all right real simple that's how you set that one up uh next thing what are you talking about Okay, uh, workspaces, aka, um, was that setting up all your layout? So, um, for example, here we have a bunch of we got a bunch of um, sessions here, right? And each session they have like you know different windows, stuff like that. Like this one, the downloading has six windows, right? Now, you know each window has like different things in it. Um, that we can uh, launch so if let's say for example i quit out of this in here we'll kill this session this uh, downloading session yes okay we kill that one and you can see that i don't have it anymore there's no more downloading on here right but uh we actually do is actually launch it and it'll actually spawn all those windows that we close real quick here 
uh, our voice was called workspace downloading here. And look at this. I'll spawn in again. And look at that. We have our, our uh, windows open again, right? Torrent. Uh, this one's download manager. This one's our Napster that's connecting here. Uh, DCC, XDCC. You get the idea. Um, so that's how you do that. Real simple. We're going to go to our demo. What did we use? So how do you set that one up? Real simple. If you have like, let's say for example, our entertainment here. Uh, all you gotta do is go in here and edit out, you know, the portion that you want to do. So let's say for example, um, I have mine here. The first window is called vids and inside it I run ranger. The second window is um, music and I run Seamus. Third window I run, um, what is it? It's called radio and I run um, PY radio and I have piano bar and I have my web browser. You get the idea and this is how it looks like, um, you know, when I uh, have in my, uh, actually that one was a radio, right? Radio, right? So you can spawn, you know, however many panes or, um, you know, windows you want to split it up and everything. Anyways, that's how that one works for that. And so you edit these portion in here. And the only thing else you need to edit is uh, the file name. So the file name here, let me give you an example. So we have two of these, right? Make sure that the file name, uh, this will be your session name. So whatever this one here, make sure it's unique. Even though this one has, you know, two different things, uh, this portion has to be unique here, right? Because um, uh, the delimiter here is just the, the comma. So if you want to use something like this, you, you should make sure you have like a unique name, like two or something like that, and then it'll be different from this one. Otherwise, it'll call the first um, occurrence of this, right? Anyways, hopefully I explained that correctly, but uh, make sure it's a different name, a unique name, uh, anything up into the comma. Uh, everything after the comma is just your description, so it doesn't really matter. But anyways, uh, hopefully you understood that. Anyways, uh, is that it for that portion? I think that's pretty much it uh, for um, how you would set this up. And make sure you know just bind the hotkey and point it to this uh, FCF speed uh, script here. It's just a script to find other scripts in here. So any scripts that, or any binaries or whatever it is, it doesn't have to be like shell script. It can be like Python script or whatever it is. It don't matter point is uh, you have to have a little um, underscore in front of the name and then you have to have a comma and then you have a description right and uh, the the periods are basically space holders um, and that's how it'll look like this when you load it up right uh, pretty much it what else are you talking about I think that's it for um, that portion oh this one um, I just barely uh, got an idea for this, the bell system. Let me show you that anyways. So let's say for example, if actually let's do this here. If I was doing a, a bell and this is a bell, by the way, um, you see that right now I turn purple and you can see it has a little, what is that explanation mark? That means the bell has occurred on that. So let's say for example, I go to my main, whatever it is, and I can do another bell here, right? And you see now we have like two bells on different sessions and everything. So with this bell thing here, it's kind of like an alert system that I can find. Okay, there's a bell on the first one and uh, this casting one here. And I can jump through it like that. All right, bell. And I can jump to the other one like that. I don't know what I'm going to do with that yet. But um, if you ever want to have a little bell system, you can always do a simulated, uh, what was that? Um, you can do echo, you know, dash E and then slash A here to simulate a bell if you want to try it out. Uh, some programs will do the bell, you know, automatically for an alert and stuff like that. So anyways, that's the bell. Not sure exactly what I'm going to use it for, but that's the idea behind the bell thing. If uh, you were wondering when you're using this. Now, if it's empty, you're not going to show you nothing, right? It's only for the bell system. You could do it for other um, alerts that you can do. Uh, just check out the... Um, what is that? Tmux man page if you want to use it for other um, monitoring systems if you want to do that. 
Anywho, hopefully I explained it uh, perfectly. All right, so this one, FCF Speed, kind of like my uh, FCF Nova. Oh yeah, for people that are using FCF Nova, uh, let me know if you like the description stuff. Um, I'll probably like do the same thing with uh, it later on when I have time. Anywho, that's it for FCF Speed, my little, you know, um, launcher for other scripts. Uh, AKA kind of like D menu or Rofi, but straight up for terminal apps only and straight up for just uh, Tmux. Uh, if you want to use Tmux without learning hotkeys, then you can actually just use, you know, scripting and then it'll do uh, basic uh, Tmux uh, commands uh, without you having to remember hotkeys. That'll be it for this one.